been a really long time since I made a video of my Mustang. It's uh, middle of winter here, as you can tell. And uh, I drove this home from my shop last night. It had been about a month since I'd even started it. And it's pretty, looks pretty sad, as you can tell. Um, not really a good time for driving or doing that kind of stuff. But uh, I have uh, kind of lost a little bit of drive for this one. I have another one. This is the one I picked up. Um, haven't done a video of this one at all, so I'll give you guys a little bit of a shot of this one. Um, <clears throat> I've got a couple projects going on. In fact, I haven't done anything to this car. Nothing. I've had it for, oh, a few months. And this is an 05, first year of the GT. And I picked this up. It only has 25,000 original miles on it. No wrecks, nothing like that. I picked it up for just over 8,000 bucks. It's only got 25,000 miles on it. And yes, before you say, hey, there's a hole in the hood, you would be right. And uh, I get that comment all the time. I tell people it's just that it was a special edition that came with a hole in the hood. But uh, used to be, uh, as you can tell, uh, a 429 Boss hood that uh, when I picked it up in California, I flatbedded it back, pulled it back in my truck, had a crack down the middle and somewhere on I-15, it launched it it's gone so but i knew the the cow was uh the scoop was gone anyway it needed to be replaced so that's something to do when i get uh, a little bit of play money to do that they're like 300 bucks painted so but anyway why the previous owner cut a hole i don't think it's functional in any way um this is just the three valve motor it's not a coyote wouldn't that be awesome if it was a coyote but it's just that measly three valve motor four six but for eight grand, you know, how can you go wrong? But let me give you a little tour. I say just for eight grand, but there's more to it than that. It's pretty dirty in here. From, uh, I bought some WeatherTech floor liners and I haven't cleaned them out. I drove this quite a bit. Some Steeda pedals, but it's just uh, black leather, black on black. All in good, really perfect shape, 24,000 miles. But here's the kicker. 20 inch uh, forged Ford wheels, actually Ford made those. Here's the kicker. Remember what I paid for this. Uh, yeah, that's, so who cares if it's not a Coyote? There's the, there's the magic, it's beautiful. I am a turbo guy, so I really had a hard time with this. So this is named the Stealth Bomber. I bought it from uh, a guy named Paul in California and he is featured on the front cover of Mustang Enthusiast uh, 2006, an issue in 2006. I might, uh, uh, if you want to look up Mustang Enthusiast 2006, the Stealth Bomber, this is the car that's on the front cover. I've got a few copies of it, but anyway. So it has a Vortec V2, um, uh, high output supercharger with its uh, water to air intercooler that is um, right there and there's obviously a smaller heat exchanger in front of the radiator down underneath there with uh, electric water pump that runs out and that is where the old battery went that is a storage tank for that um, coolant that cools that water to air intercooler the battery has been relo relocated all new billet tanks, fuse covers. Um, that's the engine coolant tank there that used to be up front there that's now been relocated for the kit. The funny thing about this kit, this wasn't installed by anybody. This was the very first V2 supercharger kit. And the kit was designed around this car. Vortec apparently contacted um, this gentleman who I purchased a car from, and they said we needed a car to um, build our kit around and so he volunteered his car. So this is the very first uh, V2 kit that Vortec put out and they put it on this car. And this uh, was installed by the Vortec engineers as they built it around. So this kit would be a little bit different than the one you buy today, but this kit's about $7,000 if you buy it now. Um, it's got some uh, CRP, uh, billet fuel rails, and I think these are running 42 pound or maybe the 39 pound Cobra injectors on it. The dyno on this one was four, I want to say 480 tire, 
and that was at sea level. I'm not getting that up here. I'm sure I'm probably mid 450s or you know somewhere at 450, mid 400s is what I meant to say. But anyway, um, I don't. I haven't driven it for the last two months, based on what you see. That's pretty bright out there, but as you can see, it's uh, not the time to be driving this kind of car. But anyway, so. I took it to the drag races and just ran a few passes on it, but with these 20-inch uh, tires, of course, you're not going to go anywhere with it. I ran a low 13. Um, I think it was like 13.2 was the best pass. It was spinning really, really hard, and you would need some slicks of some sort. I'm trying to see if there's anything else in here that I'm missing to show you, but really, it needs to be polished up, but just a Vortec V2. It's running 10 pounds. I had to change the pulley on the supercharger when I got it up here. I'm at 4,500 feet. It would only make six pounds of boost at uh, this elevation, so I, I changed the pulley to get it back up to 10 pounds based on um, how these superchargers are linear, not like a turbo. A turbo wouldn't have that problem, but yeah, I'm just not a big fan of them. I just don't like the way it comes on. I, a turbo comes on faster. Now, given a different blower might, you know, a roots blower would be totally different, but these type of blowers just come on totally different. Uh, my turbo, that car there would eat this alive. Um, I would have it for lunch. So, but anyway, this is just a much more creature comfort friendly car, more comfy to, to ride in, that kind of thing. But anyway, so there's under the hood. Um, needs a hood scoop. We got that. No real dents or dings. Um, don't know if you like the wheels or not. They're whatever on it. They're just what's there. Um, this was ordered with uh spoiler delete the delete when he ordered it he ordered this in 2004 i think it's got a couple little pops in it where he added this uh the, the um i forget what they call it but anyway the older style flip on it i like the look of it except that i've got to go back in and these clips these are rivets underneath this have fractured but you can see the license plate first HO V2. So the first high output Vortec V2 supercharger. Um, a lot of aftermarket suspension in it as well. Um, aftermarket coilovers in the back. Um, I'm sorry, front and rear suspension's all been redone. Uh, a lot of, I've seen all the receipts for it, a lot of goodies. It's just insides, I don't know, fairly stock, I think. The dash has been traded out for a better cluster. I already had to get the dash out and resolder in all new stepper motors. These are those are really bad design on Ford in 05. But uh, let me um, fire it up. Boy Scout handbook. That's what that is. I got a. I teach. I do scouts for 11 year old scouts. The possessed radio that always turns on, that's got to go. That is an electric water pump, that noise, that's starting to flow the, um, there it goes, it finally caught, had an air bubble in it, but it's, that pumps the uh, intercooler water before you start it. Let's see here, he's got a her shifter on it. it hasn't ran in a long time, so it might be cold-blooded, we'll find out. That started up pretty good. Uh, wide band, AM wide band. There's that radio again. I think it's possessed. I gotta, it just turns on whenever it feels like it. I'm sorry, it's an auto meter wide band, and then he's got a auto meter water gauge there. He used to, I don't like this at all. That's not my taste. Um, he used to have a fuel pressure and oil pressure here, but he stole them for his other Shelby Mustang. Has a boost gauge there. This is just a little, uh, I think it's tacky. I'm gonna probably pull that out at some point. I just don't like that look of it very much. Anyway. I don't even hear that. A little bit of supercharger wine. Has magnaflows on it. Anyway. Oh, 
have zero miles to empty. I think I'm pretty low on fuel. That's not good. I guess I need some fuel. That's pretty empty. Another problem these things had, they're really tacky as the cheap adhesive that Ford used on these interior panels here. I gotta take these off and do um, some spray adhesive on them. As you can tell, it needs it over there already. What a crappy radio though. That thing is possessed, it, it just sucks. Anyway, that's gonna go. These WeatherTech floor liners, I like them. They're really cool. Anyway, um, then he's got the Roush. Um, that was like a $400 upgrade, that Roush uh, louvering on the window. It's all aluminum. They have a plastic one. Who would buy the plastic one? I don't know. But anyway, nice setup. Anyway, that's it. Remember, 8,000 bucks. I don't think I went wrong. 05, 25K. Tell me what you think.